This is going to be Daniel chapter 4, and we're going to see how a wicked sinner gets right with God in Daniel chapter 4. You're going to see King Nebuchadnezzar give his testimony. You've seen people many times get up and give their testimony. And in this chapter, I want to show you what should happen when a wicked sinner gets right with God. Number one, he wanted to share God with others. Daniel 4 and verse 1, Nebuchadnezzar the king and to all people, nations and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God hath wrought toward me. How great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation. Notice he said, I thought it good to show you the signs and wonders that the high God hath wrought toward me. He was a wicked king that believed in multiple gods, lived for himself, and would kill anyone at the drop of a hat. And now in verse 1 he is saying, Peace be multiplied unto you. And he wants to show you the signs and wonders that the high God hath wrought toward him. He wanted to share God with others. He wanted to give others the peace that God had given him. And Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And maybe when you first got saved, you didn't know much. You didn't know much Bible. But one thing you can do is brag on the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice how Nebuchadnezzar Brags on God in verse 3, he says, How great are his signs! Exclamation mark. And how mighty are his wonders! Exclamation mark. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. He, and the, his dominion is from generation to generation. He's proclaiming this loudly. And Psalms 148.13 says, Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. Uh, one thing we should do is, Born-again believers just praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you can't do anything else, you can brag on God. He is the only one with bragging rights. And notice in verse 1 that Nebuchadnezzar is saying this to all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth. He has a worldwide influence. And this type of influence of someone like him getting right with God could affect who knows how many people? Just like when somebody gets right with God today who has a big influence, it affects a, a mass amount of people. But next, when a wicked sinner gets right, then he has realized the world can't help him. When you got saved, you knew the answer was Jesus Christ. You knew Jesus Christ was the cure for your sin problem. You might have looked for answers in other places first, but... You found out the world doesn't know very much. Daniel 4.4, 4, I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in mine house and flourishing in my palace. Uh, the sin of Sodom was pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness. And that's what got those guys in trouble, and that is what gets Nebuchadnezzar in trouble. He's at rest in his house and just flourishing in his palace. And it says, I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. And God spoke to men through dreams and visions before there, there was a complete written word of God. But now we have the King James Bible and we have God's words at our fingertips. We don't need God to speak to us in dreams. We have a more sure word of prophecy in the King James Bible. But have you ever had a dream that woke you up out of sleep? And you were sweating, and that's what happened here with Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, the dream troubled him. And it says, Therefore made I a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known unto me the interpretation of the dream. Then came in the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers, and I told the dream before them, but they did not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. So he's calling in all these wise guys, and the Chaldeans, the astrologers, the soothsayers, those who try to tell the truth by occult means, the magicians and astrologers, they're just hooked up with unclean spirits. And if they have any power at all, they get it from these unclean spirits. However, it seems these men are just posers and aren't hooked up with any spirit. 
And I know a woman personally who tries to do witchcraft, but she's just horrible at it. Now, she says there's no power in God and that the spirits are mightier than God. Yet she can't get hooked up with any spirit. She has no power. And if she would realize her guilt of sin and believe the gospel, then she could get the Holy Spirit and really have power. Not to do a bunch of miracles, but to just be able to come to God and talk to God and have a personal relationship with God. And then he, he, God gives you the power just to make it through this life. A lost person has no power to make it through this life other than their self. They can't call on God in times of trouble. Uh, they can't go to the Bible to get an answer. Uh, if you're saved, then you have power because you've got the book. You've got the King James Bible that has all the answers. And all of these people into the occult are hooking up with spirits that don't care anything about them. And they're just into all this stuff and they think that they have power but if they have any power at all, it just comes from the devil. And when they could have the Spirit of God inside them, they're choosing these forces of darkness. But they could have the Lord Jesus Christ who died for their sins. And Nebuchadnezzar found out quick that the wise men of this world don't have an answer to his problems. And 1 Corinthians 3.19 says, For the wisdom of this world is foolishness, with God, for it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. The wisdom wisdom of this world, the Dr. Phil and Dr. Oz and uh, Oprah and all that junk is, is foolishness. Uh, 1 Corinthians one twenty says, Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? The wisdom of this world doesn't know God. And even when a lot of those doctors are right, it's just common sense stuff. They're not really telling you anything new. And they try to help people without the Bible. You can't help people without telling someone how to be saved and giving them a Bible. That's the only way. There's the, All the answers are in the book. And many times a lost man will go to the world for an answer to his problems. He'll go to the atheists, the professors, the counselors, the psychiatrists, and other places... But the answers are in these 66 books. So Nebuchadnezzar's calling all these guys in. And they couldn't do nothing for him. They can't interpret, interpret the dream because interpretations belong to God. They can't do nothing but buy time. But then Nebuchadnezzar calls in Daniel. And it says, but at the last Daniel came in before me whose name was Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God, and in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And before him I told the dream, saying, O Belteshazzar, master of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee, and no secret troubleth thee. Tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen, and the interpretation thereof. Notice that Nebuchadnezzar calls Daniel master of the magicians, even though he isn't a magician. He just has the excellent spirit in him. He is hooked up with God and not unclean spirits. Uh, the posers who came in before him obviously aren't hooked up with any supernatural power. And even if they are, in the Bible, God's men and their power always turn out better than the devil's men and their power. Their powers always outweigh the devil's men, just like... Janese and Jambres in the book of Exodus couldn't copy all the miracles Moses did, just like Simon the sorcerer wanted the power the apostles had. And then notice in verse 8 that Nebuchadnezzar still refers to holy gods in the plural instead of one true God. So he's gotten right. He still just doesn't have any sense. And most babes in, in Christ still don't have any sense. Uh, you have to be patient with new converts until they get all their doctrine right. Now, Nebuchadnezzar isn't a babe in Christ. He's not in Christ. Uh, no, nobody was in Christ in the Old Testament. You couldn't get in Christ until the death of the testator. That's when the New Testament started, as it says in the book of Hebrews. that the new, Basically, says the New Testament doesn't start until the death of the testator. 
So nobody could get in the Lord Jesus Christ's body until after he died and resurrected. And so Nebuchadnezzar asked Daniel about his visions and dream, and he wants the interpretation. So that brings us to our next point. Uh, when a wicked sinner gets right, he considers what the preacher says. He gave up on the world, and they can't tell him anything. And now he is looking for, the, for God's man who makes much of God's words. And before you got saved, you were looking toward the wrong people for advice. And even after I got saved, for a while I still looked toward some of the wrong people for advice. I wasn't completely aware that the TV preachers were full of the devil yet. Uh, I didn't even know the Pope wasn't a Bible believer. I knew nothing about him. I was ignorant of some things, just like Nebuchadnezzar is ignorant of some things. Don't forget where you were at one point in your life. That'll give you a lot more patience and grace with with new believers and maybe even believers who've been saved for a while but they haven't grown in the Lord. Remember where you were. You didn't know much. Uh, but now Nebuchadnezzar knows who to listen to. He listens to Daniel. And now here's the dream. In Daniel 14, Thus were the visions of mine head and my bed. I saw and behold a tree in the midst of the earth, and the height thereof was great. Okay, now you're going to find out that Nebuchadnezzar is the tree in the dream. And this isn't the first time men are connected with trees in the Bible. So it's, it's not a far-fetched thing. Mark 8, 24 has a blind man saying he sees men as trees walking. And it's not far-fetched to say Nebuchadnezzar is the tree. That's what the Bible teaches. Okay, so the tree is in the midst of the earth, and the height thereof is great. Nebuchadnezzar is a supreme dictator, and his throne is above all. His height thereof is great. And the devil said this in Isaiah fourteen fourteen, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. And Nebuchadnezzar had got a little puffed up like the devil did. And Daniel four eleven says, The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached unto heaven, and the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. Remember how they wanted the Tower of Babel to reach unto heaven? Nebuchadnezzar did. He was known all over the earth as the authority. And in verse 1, he is addressing this testimony to all people, nations, and languages in the earth. He has a huge influence. Daniel four twelve and 13, The leaves thereof were fair, and the fruit thereof much. And in it was meat for all. The beasts of the field had shadow under it. And the fowls of the heaven dwelled in the bows thereof, and all flesh was fed of it and I, I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed and behold a watcher and an holy one came down from heaven watchers have power from god to do things down here on earth and a watcher comes down from heaven and this is space travel way before nasa this would have been referred to as visitors from outer space today daniel four fourteen. he cried aloud and said thus hew down the tree which would be nebuchadnezzar and cut off his branches, shake off his leaves, and scatter his fruit. Let the beasts get away from under it, and the fowls from his branches. And what does this remind you of? Proverbs sixteen eighteen: Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. So the tree's going down. Nebuchadnezzar's going down. Daniel four fifteen: Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass and the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts and the grass of the earth. So they left the stump so it can grow back. And Nebuchadnezzar is going to go from eating steak and fried chicken and tea and crumpets to eating grass with the beasts. And Daniel 4.16, let his heart be changed from man's. And let a beast's heart be given unto him, and let seven times pass over him. Nebuchadnezzar, a top of the Antichrist, is going to be given the heart of a beast. And that is what the book of Revelation calls the Antichrist. That is why the young kids go around calling each other a beast, or referring to LeBron James as the beast from the east, or I guess now he'd be the beast in the west. And this is where the devil got the idea to give Disney the Beauty and the Beast script. Nebuchadnezzar, a man, is becoming a beast. Also notice the phrase, let seven times pass over him. So it's going to be like this for seven years. 
That's what it means by seven times, another connection to the Antichrist who will be around for about seven years. Daniel 4.17, this matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over it the basest of men. So the purpose of all this happening is to show Nebuchadnezzar that he ain't all that. He has a pride problem. His power and authority gave him the big head and he is going to be abased. Uh, Daniel 4.18, This dream my king Nebuchadnezzar have seen. Now thou, O Belteshazzar, declare the interpretation thereof. For as much as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation, but thou art able, for the spirit of the holy gods is in thee. So Nebuchadnezzar knows who is hooked up with the right spirit here. It's Daniel. It's not the astrologers, the magicians, the Chaldeers, and the soothsayers. It's Daniel. And next we see that when a wicked sinner gets right, he'll take what the preacher says. Uh, he, he, he won't sit there and get mad. He'll take it. Uh, Daniel's interpretation is going to be completely negative because it is the right interpretation. And if the wise guys and magicians knew the dream, they would have told Nebuchadnezzar what, what he wanted to hear. But the king didn't have itching ears like people do today. He wanted the truth, and he takes what Daniel says. In Daniel 4.19, it says, Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonied, which means like astonished for one hour, and his thoughts troubled him. The king spake and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belteshazzar answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate thee, and the interpretation thereof to thine enemies. So Daniel was astonied for one hour because he didn't like the interpretation. He didn't want this to happen to the king, and the word of God will cut you and tell you the truth, whether you like it or not. God revealed truth to Daniel, and Daniel didn't try to change it or correct it, even though he didn't particularly like what was revealed to him. Unlike the false prophets in the Bible who will tickle the ears of the hearer, if Daniel was a false prophet, he would have lied to Nebuchadnezzar and told him something positive. Uh, notice that most of what a real teacher or preacher says about the Bible is going to be negative. Uh, read the minor prophets and it's just negative, doom and gloom from one end to the other. And we see how that Nebuchadnezzar has gotten right and takes the negative things that Daniel says to be the truth. Revelation 10.10 10 calls the Bible sweet, but it also calls it bitter. And here is Daniel's interpretation of Nebuchadnezzar's dream in Daniel 4, 20 through 25. It says, The tree that thou sawest, which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto the heaven, and the sight thereof to all the earth, whose leaves were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt, and upon whose branches the fowls of the heaven had their habitation. It is thou, O king, that art grown and become strong, for thy greatness is grown, and reacheth unto heaven, and thy dominion to the end of the earth. So Daniel even says that the tree that grew and was strong and reached unto heaven is King Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was dreaming about himself. And now Daniel 4.23, it says, And whereas the king saw a watcher and an holy one coming down from heaven and saying, Hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass and the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts of the field till seven times or seven years pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord the King. So Daniel's given the correct interpretation that he got from God himself because interpretations belong to God. Verse 25, that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will. So God's purpose of doing this to Nebuchadnezzar was to humble him and show him why he has what he has. 
He only has what he has because God let him have it. Uh, we only have what we have because God let us have it. And God allowed you to have your wife and kid, your house and your job. And don't be so full of yourself like Nebuchadnezzar was at one point, thinking you got all this good stuff by your own power because you're just something special. Even though the devil puts wicked men in power, he had to get permission from God before he did it. Uh, Daniel 4.26 says, And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee. After that thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. So they left the stump so it could grow back. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar is going to get his kingdom back after he figures out who's in charge. After he figures out where he really got all that he got. It is God and the principalities and powers who run things. And the spiritual wickedness in high places get permission from God to do certain things on the earth. And that's why Ephesians 6.12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The flesh and blood that you see in the government, they're not really in power. It's the spiritual wickedness controlling them that's actually running the show. And God will let wicked rulers come into power as a judgment on people. And then God will punish the wicked ruler for mistreating his people. He bullies the bullies. But Nebuchadnezzar had gotten lifted up in all that he had. He was lifted up in pride because of his kingdom and power. He didn't recognize that God had given it to him. Daniel 4, 28 and 29 says, All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of twelve months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. And that's what got him in trouble. He just walks around at home doing nothing. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? So he's being a selfie here. He's probably walking around his palace uh, with mirrors down the hallway and putting up his phone and taking a selfie in the mirror. And at one point he thinks he got the kingdom and everything he had all by his own power and that's not good. Galatians 6, 3 says, For if a man think himself to be something, when he's nothing, he deceiveth himself. Now Daniel 4, 31, While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven, saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee. And the moment he spoke those words, God did what Daniel said he would do. It says, While the word was in the king's mouth, those prideful words, there fell a voice from heaven saying, the kingdom is departed from thee. And as a Christian, most of the time, God will chasten me right after I sin. I mean, I sin, the next day he beats the devil out of me. Hebrews twelve seven through 8 says, If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards, and not sons. You need to judge yourself daily. Confess your sins daily. Then maybe God will take it easier on you. Uh, Daniel 4.32 And they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. So he's going from being rich and famous to being some bum that's roaming the field, eating grass like an animal. And that still happens now. Uh, these celebrities and big shots that the devil uses for a short period of time, they have everything they could possibly want. Then one day they wake up, they're bankrupt, they're gone crazy, they go from getting praised by the media to just everyone making fun of them, like Lindsay Lohan, Amanda Bynes, um, uh, whoever else. And that is what happens here to Nebuchadnezzar. But Nebuchadnezzar got right. And next we see that we see proof that Nebuchadnezzar really got right with the Lord because he accepted the punishment for his sin. If your heart is right, then when trouble comes, you say, God, I know I deserve this. And I deserve a whole lot worse. And you may be praying for him to get you out of whatever it is, but you still know that you're in it because you deserve it. Nebuchadnezzar knew he was a sinner and he knew he did wrong. 
Daniel 4.33, the same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men and did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hairs were grown like eagle's feathers, and his nails like bird's claws. Nebuchadnezzar at one point had pride, fullness of bread and abundance of idleness, and this turns a man into an animal, to where he gets perverted and has no shame for being wicked. And that's what you see in America today. You have people with pride. They won't get right with God. They got too much pride. They got fullness of bread. Or they got so much food. They just stuff their mouth. And then they just got abundance of idleness to sit around all day playing video games and watching TV. And this creates perverts. And Daniel 4.34 says, And at the end of the days, I Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar lifted up my eyes into heaven and my understanding returning to me. And I bless the Most High, and I praise and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. And this is a great picture of how God and the words of God can take a wicked sinner who has been messed up on drugs and alcohol and transform him. And there are people who have been out of their mind and on drugs to the point that they couldn't even tell you who they are. Then they get saved and cleaned up and they are transformed by the renewing of their mind and you would have never known they were a harlot or a drunkard or a sodomite or a thief. Daniel 4.35 And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing and he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth and none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? Notice the difference between Nebuchadnezzar now and the Nebuchadnezzar back in chapter 3, who was ready to kill God's men for not worshiping the golden image. Now he's saying, he's giving praise to God, giving God credit. Uh, Daniel 4.36, And at the same time my reason returned unto me, and for the glory of my kingdom my honor and brightness returned unto me, and my counselors and my lords sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto me. Notice that Nebuchadnezzar was better off after what happened. And this shows that if you mess up, failure isn't final with God. He got right, took the punishment, and ended up back on his feet. Uh, Proverbs twenty four sixteen says, For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. If you fall, just keep getting back up. Daniel four thirty seven. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways judgment and those that walk in pride he is able to abase. So Nebuchadnezzar admits he walked in pride. He admits he was wrong. and His attitude towards the judgment on his sin shows that he had a repentant heart. And notice also how much he exalts the God of heaven. The word extol means to praise highly. So he's praising God. And Nebuchadnezzar got right with God, and this was his testimony in Daniel chapter 4.